This week on TechRap, not quite finished yet, Samsung unveils 5.8 and 6.3 inch phablets, the Galaxy Mega. We go hands on with Facebook Home. Is it a better Android experience or more of an inconvenience? And we take a look at LG's Note 2 killer, the Optimus G Pro. Hi, I'm Michael Josh, and this is TechRap. With the Galaxy Note 8 hitting stores this week and the S4 by the end of the month, you'd think Samsung is done for now, but it looks like there's no time to rest for the world's leading cell phone manufacturer. This week, the Korean company announces the Galaxy Mega. Initially rumored as the successor to the popular Note 2, the Mega is instead a mid-range phablet. The phone comes in two variants, one that is 5.8 inches and another that is 6.3 inches. That puts the phone right smack in the middle of the 5.5 inch Galaxy Note 2 and the 8-inch Galaxy Note 8. As value phones, both models will have scaled-down specs, including dual-core processors, 8-megapixel cameras, and only 8 or 16 gigabytes of internal storage. Pricing is still unclear, but expect both phones to launch globally starting May 2013. Not to be outdone by gaming console rival Sony, which announced the PlayStation 4 in February, Microsoft is also set to release the next-generation Xbox in 2013. Initially set for an April announcement, tech news site The Verge reports Microsoft pushes back the event to May 21st. According to rumors, the next Xbox will require an always-on internet connection, a security feature that is aimed at preventing purchased games from being resold. Microsoft has neither confirmed nor denied the rumors. The new generation Xbox codenamed Durango is expected to be fully unveiled at the Electronic and Entertainment Expo or E3 in June and available commercially in late 2013. A new Google Play is coming your way. Google begins rolling out a redesigned version of its Android app to users this week. Google claims the new design is clean, simple, and lets you find content quickly. TechRap got early access to the new Google Play app. We like how they've cleaned up the interface and made it look less cluttered. We like how similar books, music, or apps are now grouped together and how recommendations are always there as you scroll down. The redesigned Google Play Store app also features a simplified way of making purchases so it's easier to access available apps and other content. The new Google Play app will slowly roll out in the next few weeks to Android phones and tablets running Android 2.2 Froyo end up. If you're a smartphone geek like I am, there are a lot of new exciting phones to look forward to in the first half of 2013, each with its own special feature. Get your wallets ready. Take for example the Galaxy S4, which we reviewed back in March. The S4 introduces a feature called Dual Shot, which allows users to use both the front-facing and rear camera at the same time. With Dual Shot on the S4, you can shoot both photos and videos. We saw a similar feature in the LG Optimus G Pro, although you can only use it in video mode. We were also pleasantly surprised to find Dual Shot for photos in the Cherry Mobile Flame 2.0. Don't have any of these phones? Don't worry, we found an iOS app that can almost do the same thing. The free app is called DBL Cam. What the app does, it takes two shots, one using the front-facing camera and the other using your rear camera, not quite at the same time, but at about a one-second interval. You can only get the one preview window, so make sure you compose both shots before you hit the shutter button. Once you're happy with your dual shot, you can upload your masterpiece to Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Facebook Home is now available as a free download for users of select HTC and Samsung phones. Is it worth making it your default home screen? While promising, the answer is unfortunately a no for now. Facebook Home does a great job bringing Facebook features front and center. When you get new notifications or messages from your Facebook contacts, they show up on cover feed, which in itself is a live page, a working app, not just a screensaver. You can double tap to like, and comment without leaving the front page. But here's where the problem lies. Not all your contacts' photos are great. Some even may not be safe for work. And then some may be lovely, but private. That's when front and center for the world to see becomes a problem. And for now, there's no way to limit what shows up on cover feed. Another big disappointment is how all the other functions on the phone are hidden. 
At the very basic level, the ability to make calls takes up to three swipes. Shouldn't that function have been placed on the home screen? This is, after all, a phone. The only redeeming factor of Facebook Home for now are chat heads, which pop up over open apps so you can chat with friends and say, browse through photos on Instagram at the same time. But we did note that chat heads doesn't work when you're playing games. The good news is, chat heads doesn't require Facebook Home. In fact, if you download the latest version of Facebook Messenger for Android, you get the service. To turn it on, go to Settings, Notifications, and then make sure Chat Heads has a tick box. If that option isn't there, make sure you go to the Google Play Store to update your copy of Messenger. Look for the current release, 2.4.2. LG launches its flagship smartphone, the LG Optimus G, in the Philippines this March, but a few days later unveils a souped-up version called the LG Optimus G Pro. The phone isn't available anywhere aside from Korea and Japan, but TechRap got our hands on the 5.5-inch phablet. Check out our hands-on review. LG's Optimus G Pro was intended to go head-to-head -head against Samsung's Galaxy Note 2. It does come with impressive specs that, on paper, trump the popular phablet a gorgeous 5.5-inch Full HD display, a 13-megapixel camera, and a slightly better battery. Here are some features we found interesting. First off, the notification shade was great. While it does take up half the screen, we like the customizable options that allows you to pick which tools you get quick access to. The camera was great too, particularly the new dual-shot video mode. One weird feature that won't work in our market but was still cool to see was this retractable antenna, which in Korea allows users to watch TV on their phones. Finally, the phone comes with an IR blaster and can be used as a remote control for your television. We tried it out on the one we had at Rappler HQ, and it worked great. The unit we tested was purchased in Korea and came with an extra battery and a stand that doubles as a battery charger. Phablets are great for watching videos, so if you're in the market for a new one, the LG Optimus G Pro, albeit difficult to source for now, makes an interesting pitch for phablet supremacy. And that was TechRap. Good news, we have the Sony Xperia Z back, and it's working, and barring any unforeseen circumstances, expect a review on next week's show. For the latest news updates, don't forget, follow Rappler.com on social media. Send me an email at techwrap at rappler.com or a message on Twitter using the hashtag techwrap if you have any comments or things you'd like to request to be reviewed on the show. And don't forget, new episodes are posted every Sunday on rappler.com. That's all for this week, folks. I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.